morning everybody welcome to soapbox slam where i get on my soapbox and i talk about the things that i see going on so um i'm a little late to the party as far as um discussing the recent debate um everybody has, has heard and seen about the debate i actually watched the debate on debate night and i made several posts that i deleted um prior leading up to the de debate and then even after the debate um and i deleted those posts uh because i i struggled with um staying on my message and i rambled and i, I reviewed them and i thought mm, i'm not really I, I it's not that i the things that i was saying were what i believe um i just I don't know. I deleted them. Um, I did listen to what a lot of other people had to say. Uh, other people, mostly on social media, um, because I don't like listening to um, these pundits on television, um, conservative or negative, uh, or Republican uh, or Democratic um, pundits. To me, um, both both media sources on television have clear agendas. Um, agendas that are designed to support the Republican candidate or agendas that are designed to support the Democratic um, candidate. And uh, as I've stated several, several, several times, um, and I will state again over and over again, um, I do not support, I do not blindly support one party over another. I certainly would never be um, a blind party allegiant person. Um, I require um, my representative to do more for me than just rubber stamp um, because I'm a part of a party. Um, that That is very sheepish and that is very um, spineless and it essentially gives freedom for the party that you what you whatever you support to do whatever it is they choose to do and they don't really have to answer to you um and and i require um the people who are representing me to answer to me um that's just what i require that's their job and so i don't believe in and i i do not believe in blind allegiance to parties and I, I continue to post and make comments to people and I, I, I possibly shouldn't be derogatory in it but I, I think that people need to declare their moderacy or and need to move to moderacy um, way more and demand um, answers and demand that their representatives work for whatever they vote for. Um, that's my position. Um, so having said that, I don't, I, I do not, I do not support American politics today. I do vote. Um, but um, I find that there's a level of corruption and a level of um, anti-public service in the name of public service that occurs. And uh, I, I, I just find it um, disenchanting. Um, and and I, I was listening to a comedian, George Carlin. Uh, he's gone now. But um, he used to say that, I was watching in some interviews with him, and he used to say that he no longer, um, he no longer cares and I'm, I'm paraphrasing and, and summing up in essence. And he said, by not caring, um, not feeling like he had a stake in the game, um, it freed him from from um, feeling beholden to the things that were going on. And I would love to get to that point. Um, I think he had a wonderful comedic um, timing and wonderful comedic perspective. Um, in fact, I... I rather admire that man um and i would put him in a category of where um he 
humanity and human beings ought to be um, striving for. Uh, because I, I see the things that he was saying years ago, um, and I see it amplified um, today. And I, I think that um, I, I just really respect that guy and and um, enjoy his comedy and commentary. Uh, and I, I will continue to strive to be uh, more like that man. Um, but having said all that, let me go on. I, I watched the debate on debate night. Um, and I wanted to get on my soapbox. And why the, what, the main message is not even so much about the politics of things. Um, I do have opinions about the politics of things. And I, I will mention those things on this post. Um, but my biggest takeaway um, from that debate is my disappointment in um, and Joe Biden because he's senile and um, look the aging process is not fun everybody everybody will go through the aging process and senility will affect everybody senility doesn't necessarily mean um, dementia or or um, Alzheimer's um, it, 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 it's not senility isn't exactly that and there's a new they've redefined the word senility to neurocognitive uh, deterioration or something like that there's a new kind of word to describe senility um, but simply senility, senility really is just um, that you lose your train of thought or you lose uh, uh, the things that you were saying you, you tend to forget what you were saying or um, it's not very cohesive in the things that you're saying. Now, as I understand when I watch it and as I continue to get old and, and understand what's happening with me and, and getting older and, and just having a, 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 spirit, a spiritual connection um, and truly listening and feeling emotionally, oh, I, I'm, a, I'm a bleeding heart, whatever. Actually, I, I'm not, I don't really think of myself as a bleeding heart. It's not my fault that I have empathic um, abilities to um, truly feel what it is that somebody is enduring and, and trying to say. But the point I'm making here with, with my empathic feelings and my empathic abilities is that what's happening with Joe Biden, because it's not dementia um, at this point, and it's early onset of, of, of senility, but what's happening with senility and what happens to everybody as they continue to get older and everything else what happens is your brain is still thinking and you your spirit your brain your mind your body all of that is still thinking at a certain level right it's still thinking like you did when you were in your 20s but as it executes because of the deterioration of of, of your body and, and the aging process because of the deteriorating deterioration um, what's happening is your your brain and you're thinking one speed, but it's executing at a different speed. And then when you realize, oh shit, I'm not executing as quickly as I'm processing or thinking that I am, you kind of lose yourself and you're like, oh, shit, did I say that? Did I not say that? You know, um, it, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's kind of like, a one thing is happening faster than the other and then you realize oh shit they're not happening at the same time or at the same speed and you kind of catch yourself and then you lose yourself because you just realize oh i didn't execute as quickly as i thought i did um it's, it's a process like that that's happening right you know you're, you're processing the information and you know you want to say something back but your body's too slow and it's moving much slower than what you thought <laughs> was going on and, you know, the, the pressure, um, which creates more senility because there, there's so much pressure to, to present in a certain kind of way or, or to present to people in your family that you're okay, you're, there's nothing wrong with you, you're, you're a virile old man, um, you, 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 you stumble over it, right? You, you become insecure, you become conscious of whether or not everything is operating at the right at the right timing um, or is timing misfiring um, 
and I like think of it as a, the timing belt on a vehicle if that belt is too loose or something's going wrong and it's just, then the vehicle kind of misfires and you know because it's not running at the same speed or everything's not ha the timing isn't right um it, it's the same thing that's occurring but it doesn't mean that joe biden doesn't read books and doesn't understand what he's reading right that's not that's not senility senility is simply this process of um the speed not being at the same rate um dementia is true forgetfulness and um you know alzheimer is true memory loss and um senility isn't necessarily memory loss um it's losing track of the things that are being said but it's not memory loss right I, i'm sure joe biden and with senility people who suffer with senility and everybody will suffer from sen senility not everybody will get alzheimer's though right um you know the, the they are kind of mutually exclusive um and 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 there there kind of isn't necessarily an overlap on it um the issue is the timing and speed you're thinking at one speed like a 20 year old kid or your spirit's still running at a 20 year old kid but your body is so slow that it's not catching up to the speed in which you are thinking in your head or what you're thinking to execute so i say all that to say i'm sure both joe biden reads perfectly fine and can remember what he read the issue is aging and this is a part of the aging process and everybody will suffer from this um uh but having said that I, I, I begrudge Joe Biden and I begrudge the Democratic leaderships and everything else to um, allow him to put himself in front of the people like this. And I say all that to say, you know, I'm sure it's a stubborn old fight dealing with, I know, dealing with an old man who like, you know, you want to take your keys away from your, your grandpa, right? Like uh, these are, I'm going from experience, right? Um, who was actually suffering from uh, dementia and, and, and the particular fight within the family and how much of a fight he put up when it was time to take his keys away or, you know, anything like that. The, 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 it, it, it's contentious a bit when you're dealing with the elderly because they don't have, um, they haven't come to terms with their limitations. And I'm sh sure that that, that is... Um, a part of the issue with, with Joe Biden is him not coming to terms with um, the aging process and his aging. Um, and, and that is being displayed to the American public. It's very real, right? We all will go through this. We all have gone through this in dealing with our elderly. Um, it's very, very real. And it's not fun. It's absolutely not fun. It's certainly not something to, to poke fun at. And it's certainly not something to laugh at. And it's certainly not something that, um, that, that, um, that it, Donald Trump should continue to berate and poke fun at and, and everything else. I mean, to be honest with you, at this point, since it's crystal clear how senile Joe Biden is, that if Joe, if, Donald Trump wanted to win people over, it would be showing compassion for 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 the aging process and Joe Biden. If he really wanted to win this election and he was really about people and really about compassion and really about caring, Donald Trump would seize this moment and pivot from his attack on Joe Biden and stick to his message and his platform. Unfortunately, Donald Trump doesn't have a platform and Donald Trump himself is too old to be running this country. I mean, that's just the honest to God truth. I'm not a Trump supporter. I, I'm not a, a, a Biden supporter. I, I'm not a Democrat and I'm not a Republican. I'm an independent person who will um, critically think about the things that are going on, on research and make my own decisions based on that. And unfortunately, there are not, a, there's not a lot of people in, in either party who are concerned with American prosperity. And um, they have sold us all out. Um, and, and that's how I feel about both parties. So um, 
I, I watched the debate and the biggest takeaway to me is um, it is cr cr crystal clear that Joe Biden is suffering from senility. He's senile. He's a senile old man. Um, and, and Donald Trump um, is also too old to be running this country. Uh, I also want to say, and, and I'll start to, to wrap this up. I also want to say about politics in general and about the presidencies in general. Um, for every four years, every time a term, a presidential term turns over, whether it's a new president or he becomes an incumbent, the first two years of a president's terms, of a president's term, is the residual policies of the predecessor. For example, the first two years of Barack Obama's presidency were still the policies of um, George Bush. And it took those two years and from the time he, Barack Obama got in office and it took two years for Barack Obama's policies to take hold, infiltrate our economy and infiltrate our society and then manifest itself in society, which were the manifestations occurred in the last two years of his first, Barack Obama's first term. Then Barack Obama won a second term. Now, at the beginning of the second term, he actually got to see the results of his first, his last two years of his term, his policies. He got to see the results of those and he was able to expand on those results in the next term. So through the eight years of Barack Obama's presidency, six of those years were while he was in office, his his own policies and his adjustments to his policies to, to move forward, right? Now, that means when Donald Trump took office, the first two years of Donald Trump's presidency were still the policies of Barack Obama. And it took two years for Donald Trump's policies to infiltrate society and manifest. And that happened in the last two years of his term. Unfortunately, in the last two years of Donald Trump's term, uh, COVID hit. Now, the wonderful thing about um, Donald Trump's presidency is in those last two years, Donald Trump did great measures to combat COVID. And that great measure that I give credit to is his Operation Fast Track, which deregulated the FDA and allowed for the creation of the vaccine. It, the deregulation took away the, the length in which that vaccine should have been tested and it brought it to market in a very fast way. And the overproduction of um, uh, masks and things like that, PPE, the overproduction. And, I, and, and again, it, it, a governmental effort created by Donald Trump to overproduce, which means you flood the market with the supply, which got the cost down, made it cheap for people to, to get PPE and everything else. This is all the policy of Donald Trump, okay? The only reason why Joe Biden was able to do the things that Joe Biden did in his presidency was because of the last two years and the policies that Donald Trump created. And so for the first two years of Joe Biden's presidency, and the only reason why Joe Biden was able to do anything with COVID was because of everything that Donald Trump set up for him, period. That, that is how politics work. That is how our government works. It's just how it works. And, and, and so, you know, you want to give credit to Donald Trump for his economy. Well, you can't do that 100% because it's actually due to Barack Obama who created energy independence. We were energy independent because of Barack Obama's policies, which Donald, which he handed that off to, to Donald Trump, and Donald Trump was able to expand on that. But the first two years, which were our, our so-called glory years of Donald Trump's presidency, were actually due to the policies that were created from his predecessor. And, and, and it's always that way. That's why it's better to be a two-term president, because then 
you can really see um, as, an, as a society and, and, and civilization and people, we can really see the effects of what that, that president um, has done. And unfortunately, with these two geriatric old men, in the last eight years from having both of these men, we see what their policies have done. And unfortunately, uh, the last eight years in American society have been shit. Economically, socially, everything else, it has been shit. Complete shit. Whether you liked George Bush or whether you liked Barack Obama, either one of those two men's eight years <laughs> were relatively fine years, in all honesty. Um, you know, you, you you had those hiccups. I mean, um, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, nine eleven was was a horrible um, thing that George Bush had to get us through, um, and there was some questionable um, aspects of all of that. But as a whole, our country was doing fine economically. Our country was doing fine. We were at we went to war uh, over our our our. Attack, um, you know. In, in hindsight, when you look at George Bush and um, Barack Obama, um, our society wasn't as fractured as it is today, and in, in every aspect. And this fracturing that we feel and see are the results of these two leaders, these two geriatric old men. Um, and, and, you know, so I can't co-sign to go for another four years, which would be a total of 12 years of these geriatric policies. Um, it, it, it's, I just can't, I, I have no stomach for it. And, and, you know, as I chat with people, there's some people who want to do more Donald Trump and there's some people who want to do more Barack Obama. But the people I most identify with are the ones that I think are critical thinkers and also are saying, you know what, this is sickening, this is pathetic, this is not where we need to go. Having said all that, um, I do support the third party. Um, I really wish, I really wish Kennedy would debate these men. I really wish that we had the option, an easier option to um, vote for Kennedy. Um, I think that Joe Biden ought to step down. I, I think that, um, you know, Donald Trump is gonna do what Donald Trump is gonna do and his supporters are gonna support him. And I, I don't think that it serves anybody to try and change that. Um, I, I think that a, a different awakening needs to occur with with um, Donald Trump and Donald Trump supporters, um, and I, I'm not uh, I'm not eager to try and force people to have their awakenings or, or or anything like that. All I can say is that when you really examine um, Donald Trump's record, the only thing I can give Donald Trump credit for. The, to me, the only reasonable thing I can give Donald Trump credit for is his Operation Fast, Fast Track and what he actually did do, which was a lot to set Joe Biden up for um, combating the pandemic. And the, the, those two things that he did that were stupendous, stupendous, was Operation Fast Track, which deregulated the vaccination, um, which allowed us to get vaccination to, to market a lot quicker and um, the overproduction of PPE. Um, that is that is 100% um, a part of um, Donald Trump's um, presidency and policies. Uh, and I give him a lot of credit for that. And he doesn't get the credit that he deserves for that um, because that was 100% um, the right thing to do. Um, now the mandate, absolutely wrong you, you know you, you got this thing to market you brought it in very cheap that's when at that point it should have been the public's choice but uh, you know both parties have this ability to think that they know what's best for the people and want to governmentally mandate something whether it's a vaccine or abortion or um, uh, 
whatever the case may be. Um, but I can tell you this, everything that they seem to be mandating, regulating, they being both Republicans and Democrat, all of that stuff to me um, doesn't do anything for the public. It does everything for corporations. Um, and, and they are in their pockets. The, 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 our representatives are bought and paid. Um, and, and, you know, Elizabeth Warren might not be bought and paid by the finance industry, but she's bought and paid for by some industry out there because she was a school teacher and she's a millionaire now. Um, and, uh, you know, so she's been bought off. All of these politicians have been bought off. You don't go into, to, to representation and start out piss poor and by the time you're done, you're, you know, a part of the upper elite echelon and, and financial top 10% or 5% or 1%. Um, it just, come on, let's be realistic. And I, I don't like that kind of politics. Um, I just don't. But far be it for me to believe or, or be altruistic or utopic about my, uh, my representation, right? Um, far, far be it for me to believe that uh, there's a higher standard there. Um, I do not support one party or another. Um, I, I, I would like to see the third party, especially at this point. Um, Mr. Kennedy, I mean, to me, he can't be any worse than the two presidents that we've had in the last eight years. Um, he really can't um, because two presidents and our lives have been shit as is. Um, and there isn't a leader that's capable of pulling us out of that. Um, and we don't see enough of what Kennedy wants to do um, to have that option. And that, to me, is alone sad that we have a third option that they don't want to allow us. They being social media and the, the, the so-called two parties don't want us to hear. Um, and that has a lot to do with the corporations controlling both the Republican and the Democratic parties. So just wanted to get on my soapbox about that. Um, I, I, again, um, I did watch the debate. I think it's sad that this is the state of things. I think it's sad that, um, sad and very clear that um, Joe Biden is senile. But I also think it's just equally as sad and um, unfortunate that Donald Trump is who Donald Trump is and he missed a golden opportunity golden opportunity to win people over by acknowledging the senility in, in, in Joe Biden and showing compassion for that and sticking showing his compassion and his so-called he has the biggest heart on the stage show it now recognize that that's an old man recognize that that's your dad uh, uh, um, Donald Trump and what your dad went through in the elderly, old, and the um, aging process. Why don't you show some compassion for that? You'll win a lot more people over. Stick to your message and show compassion for for uh, Joe Biden's senility. <laughs> That's what I'm on my soapbox about. You guys have a wonderful day. Oh, and as I always say, be kind. Do an act of kindness. Be kind. Okay. Uh, I'll, sh I'll share one act of kindness that I that I did just this past week. Um, there, uh, there's this guy at the gas station, younger guy, um, who's talking to me about going to the military. He works at the gas station, so you know he has very limited income. And he was telling me about you know him trying to get, and, and, and he wasn't even plugging. He was talking about his military experience and the tracking that they do in military and having to take some exam. And he was like, yeah, in a couple weeks I'll be able to save up some money to. Um, you know, to, to buy the book. Um, a S A V A B A A S V A B A S V A B book or something like this um, to track yourself in the military. Um, you know, what you're gonna, what division you're gonna go into, or, or department you're gonna go into in the military, or whatever else. Anyways, he was talking about how how he, you know, his plan to um, save some money and how he's gonna save some money to get the book and and practice tests and everything else. So I went over to Barnes and Nobles and I bought the book. It was like 40 bucks. Um, and went back to the gas station and told the guy, hey, look, man, I told him two things. Number one, use the book. <laughs> and number two, um, pay it forward. He was, I, I told him, you know, now I'm holding you to 
the fact that you now have to do something kind for somebody else. Um, not your family, a complete stranger. Um, do something kind for them, um, you know, as an act of kindness. So we all can do something like that for somebody out there. Um, it, 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 like I said, it wasn't a plug. I think it was totally unexpected. But I'd like to see this young man um, make a career for himself um, and, and um, you know, get out of his current circumstances and, and onto an upward, upwardly mobile life, you know, um, marry his girlfriend and have some kids and, 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 and do better, right? Um, so any and everybody can do an act of kindness, right? Um, so do an act of kindness. Have a wonderful day.